I think we're live. Oh, <laughs> what's going on, guys? We are live. Welcome to Beastly Thoughts episode. What was it again? 146. 146. 146. 146. <laughs> Yo, I got a lot of shit going on. There's a lot of moving parts over here, but Robbie. <laughs> okay, Briar. I'm sorry. <laughs> So we got a lot to talk about today, and I'm, I'm going to be honest. I think a lot of it is going to be a continuation of a lot of conversations we had last week. Because even though we did a two-hour podcast last week, I feel like we got unfinished business. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot, a lot yeah. of things going on. A lot of things going on. A lot of things going on. Beastly, what the fuck you been up to, man? Happy birthday! <laughs> Happy birthday! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Happy birthday! Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm scared. Come on, two beers. <laughs> Cheers to you, like my friend. All this, all this aggression. I feel like I shouldn't get older. Yeah, guys, today's my birthday. I turned 21 today. Really enjoying this youth, and and you I'm look incredibly handsome for 21. I have I'm to in, say, I'm in the spring of youth right now. I'm enjoying my day. Just when I got a new phone, been hanging with my family. Had a great party last night. Cooked out. Got a little tipsy with my dad. Played some tether ball with my dad. Made my dad fall down the hill of my backyard. I felt horrible about it until he told me not to help him up. Then I felt okay. But it was a great day. Had lots of family over. And here I am today winding down with you guys on the Beastly Thought Show. And just in case you don't notice, I play tetherball. It's a serious tether ball. game. Tetherball, man. It's, it's a tether real sport. You know, it, as far as I know. <laughs> I mean, it's not all eight-year-old girls. Some... 21 year old fathers of five get out there and aggressively play tetherball and i don't care if i'm playing against a person that's four foot five i'm going all in on your ass i'm just trying to do the math here now i've seen your oldest also named brett yes when did you have your first kid when you were like six years old <laughs> <laughs> if you're 21 yeah you're a year older listen, than me apparently. listen man. how does that work how does that okay. work listen in the hood, things happen. When you go down to the candy lady's house, sometimes you get more than candy. Oh, Jesus. Okay? Well, happy birthday, man. I hope you get have an awesome birthday and get everything you wish for. This is the greatest birthday gift I could have. Thank you, guys. Oh. What have you been playing all week, man? All week long, I played nothing but. And I know that it's going to be blasphemy for people out there like me who own the Nintendo Switch. I have been playing... Horizon Zero Dawn. All week. I haven't had an opportunity to stop playing that game. I'm close to 40 hours in. I think it's highly addicting. I can't stop running errands. I can't stop doing side quests. I want to explore new caverns and territories, find new enemies. And I, I think it's like one of the greatest games I've ever played when it comes to just making montages and doing things in different ways. It's such a fun game. It's really special to me. And that's all, like, I got my, my studio set up in a, a particular way now. Yeah. Where my TV is right next to my wife's TV. And it's like a silent bonding thing. It's every man's dream. You're actually spending time with your with your significant other. She's next to you. There's no conversation. But it still counts as spending <laughs> time together. Because she's playing Horizon on her 50-inch 4K. And I'm playing Horizon on my 60-inch 4K with HDR. The game's amazing. And I know, I know. I heard it from you, Briar Pre-Show. I heard it from my brother, Joe who came out and hung out with me yesterday, that this game is one of the greatest games like of all time. Of all I want, time. I want, before we move on to Zelda, because, Robbie, you've been playing Zelda too, right? Yes, I have. All right, on so the, before on the, we on move the to Zelda, yeah, which I'm actually really interested to hear about, mm -hmm. but Horizon, I, any conversation we have after this point, I want to point out, and I want to state my position that I think it's a fantastic game, and I really enjoyed my time with it. But there are some issues with that game. That I feel like a lot of people just kind of are looking past, right? Yeah, is, looking. yeah, is I feel like it starts it starts off like really strong, but then it's got a very slow, long, slow period between like the introduction and like the like here's you know here's what we're going for, here's what we're fighting for, right? And mm -hmm. the story kind of like getting back in gear. Um, and the, once the story gets back in gear, there's probably like. I'd say eight hours. Maybe it's a little less of that, but it's just like go, 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 man! You can't. You just you're so compelled to find out what the next revelation is because it's so interesting. What they've mm -hmm. done with that world and that story, I find extremely interesting. Oh God, it is. But the side quests, and even even part of the main story, it feels like a side quest where it's a, it's very much about political intrigue and that kind of stuff. 
I had zero interest in. Like, I just wanted to get it done with so I could move on really? with the real story. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm talking to people doing side quests because I felt the need to level up. Um, mm -hmm. And I just, I couldn't care less what they were saying. It's like, I, I just, I had no emotional attachment to the characters of this world. I was very emotional, att emotionally attached to the, the main story. Oh. Like the... Like basically, I I I don't want to spoil anything because it's it's too cool it's, to spoil. It's really good, yeah. But like basically, like the I had a very emotional reaction to the the main storyline of this game. I thought it was really fantastic. It was really well written. It wraps up, which is nice. You know, it's nice to actually mm -hmm. get an ending and not like a, a you know a pr preview for a sequel. Some cliffhanger. Yeah, they do that. Yeah, <clears throat> but like I. Throughout my time with Horizon, I very much felt like I don't want to experience any of this other shit. I just want to mainline this story because that's the only thing that's interesting to me. Even the combat. Initially, I loved the combat. But once I kind of figured out that all you had to really do is kind of whistle people over and then stab them <laughs> to kill them with one shot. It's like the, the combat got kind of old, you know? like It felt very one note. It's like once you kind of figure out the the system, then it, it just kind of, it feels very repetitive until you get to some of the bigger okay. boss fights and the bigger boss fights can be a lot of fun. Yeah. Now, let me say, there's a lot of that I agree with and I have a different perspective on it personally. I, I've, I've been through the low. I know what you mean. The game starts off, the story is very contained and it seems exciting and then all of a sudden you go into this world, you hit with this expansive, beautiful world and you're roaming around doing things. It takes a while for the story to actually pick up takes a while for you to really find your note and find exactly what the objective is in the game because it's so much to do. Um, and I'm past that point now where the story is actually starting to pick up, really pick up what, yeah. what you're talking about. It's really starting to hit boom, boom, boom. But for me, going out into the world and and, and fighting these enemies and finding these, uh, these resources and crafting and making things and is so fun to me. I, I, and see, I don't feel nearly as, as bad about maybe the side quests as you do. I think some of these mm -hmm. characters could have been better written. I think that some of these stories could have been fleshed out a little bit more. But again, they are side quests. They're very similar to The Witcher. You go talk to someone, you follow tracks, pretty much the exact they're same They're similar deal. to The Witcher, except they're not as engaging mm -hmm. as The Witcher. I've, I've found some that are. Now, you didn't, you, you ran through the game, you kind of stayed to the main story because the, the side quest that you found didn't really grab you. Yeah. I've been doing all errands, all side quests. Can you quests. give me an I example mean, of like a really good one? Uh, off the top of my head now, it's like really hard for me to think about. I know yesterday I played through at least two that kind of blew me away. And it's just been so much going on. I really have to think about it. I'll try to remember by the end of the show. But the world to me, the actual. The mechanics of the world, the way that you actually traverse this world, the way that you're able yeah. to call upon I mean, call upon creatures, turn them against one another, make them fight for you. The whole mechanic of the way you take down enemies to me is so fun that just running out to do these side quests, it makes it worth its while. It's like the 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 recipe to actually get to where you're going to me is worth it. Even though the side quest might not be full, you might not have that sense of extreme satisfaction from the story, but the things that you had to do to get there, it's kind of like building your own story. It's kind of like the way that you described Destiny years ago, is that you play it with your friends and you kind of build your own kind of your own experience and it's unique to you. For me, I don't think anybody's gonna play this game the same way. You can walk around this world and whisper or whistle and make enemies come to you and one, one shot them, you can do that. You know, there's people who can spam particular spots in Destiny or any other game to make it appear cheesy. But there are also ways you can make it extremely exciting. You can go balls balls out, running into a crowd of aggravated enemies, and do some incredibly awesome stuff. And I've done oh, that. Crazy cool shots, yeah. I mean, so I, I, fought, I fought a boss yesterday, a giant boss. I can't remember the name was the name of this thing, but it was huge, right? Was that and Thunderjaw. Uh, was it? It's Did super it look like, a, like a T Rex kind of thing. Yes, and it had like the yeah. giant that would be a Thunderjaw. I fought yep. this guy. It took a long time to take him down, but toward the end of the, the, the battle, four other enemies came running in, and I was like, what's going on? I see these red dots around me, and I had to, good? like... <laughs> but oh, the thing shit. Is, right? <laughs> I'm fighting the Thunderjaw, and I got these other aggravated enemies running towards me. I, you know, I knocked one down. I gra grappled one, made him stick to his spot, knocked him over, turned him. He started fighting, you know, the, the, the giant Thunderjaw with me. And it just made the experience so amazing. I was like, this has got to be one of the most magical moments 
There are some in a game like this. Crazy and, and moments uh, in that game. I had, you know, like almost every boss fight down to a T, too, was that I found that I was like, am I going to be the one who dies or is he going to be the one that dies? Because it was like, it was almost like a simultaneous health bar drain on both our parts. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Down to the last boss, it was like down to the second whether it was going to be me or him. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. every. Every boss fight was like that. It was that was really compelling to me. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking of one that I did this morning. It was a bandit camp. I talked to a guy outside of a bandit camp who was a hunter, uh, very similar to me, and yeah. uh, he was he was crouched down hiding. He said, "Stay low." You know, he started to explain to me what he does. He doesn't go after robots and kill them. Yeah, he likes to go guy, and take. Yeah. And go take out these bandits and why he does it. And his friend got killed by the bandits. And now he has this goal in his mind to kill as many as possible. He wanted to know if you help him. I wouldn't take out this bandit camp with this guy. And then we had this long drawn out conversation afterwards as to what his real intentions were. And they gave the guy a lot of weight and it made it feel real. Of course, he lost his best friend who was also who's overconfident and went and gotten murked by some bandits. And I felt like that was meaningful. And it wasn't that that one in particular wasn't as great as some of the ones I've seen in The Witcher, which I haven't played through. But it it did give it a little bit more meaning. It's better than just running in and just killing bandits, taking over a camp. There was a, a real reason behind it. And so far, I found lots of those little instances in this game that really have made it a special experience for me. And you guys know it's really hard for me personally to stick with a game because I have so yeah. many games. Uh, you know, and I've been trying. I stopped playing <laughs> the Rise of the Tomb Raider. I stopped playing Resident Evil Seven. This game, since the day it came out, is the only thing I've been playing. And I can't wait to finish it, but I feel like after I finish it, I still want to run around this world and try to fight these enemies. And I don't care if it's part of my quest or not. I run into an enemy I haven't seen before. I can go to a village and make it a quest, or I can just try to be a badass and see if I can figure out how to take him out right now. Mm -hmm. And it's just so many different aspects of this game to me that are super exciting. Everybody's not going to feel the same about it. I could I could hide into a bush, like you said, Briar, and wait or throw a rock and go yeah. and turn an enemy or stab someone. But I guess it's for a particular type of gamer. For me, I like it to be exciting. I like that feeling of having enemies chasing me and trying to escape, trying to get into a better position, and then just coming out and destroying them. And It's been really, really fun for me, and I think that a lot of people feel the same way about this game. I can't lie that my my feelings about this game were way higher until I started playing Zelda. <laughs> I know, um, I know. Everybody's like, saying the same I thing, to, I, I was playing Horizon. I was really happy about it. I was like, I was blown away. And then last week on Friday, I started playing Zelda on stream. And my motivation to play Horizon was so fucking low because of what I saw in my small taste test of Zelda. It, uh, Horizon does open world games like we've seen I think as good or better than just about anybody except for maybe um, Rockstar. Rockstar. It's beautiful. It's the world is filled with shit to do. There's a ton of collectibles. Like whatever whatever kind of gamer you are, you're gonna find something to do in Horizon. And then I got a taste of Zelda. And I was like, oh, they just switched the game up. <laughs> like Nintendo just it's like another level. Like, I'm okay, so we excited. Saw, to we, see see, we see what you're doing, Skyrim. We see what you're doing. We. See, Ubisoft, we see what you're doing. Uh, you know, yeah, and we're just, you know we're gonna take all that stuff and pick what we like the most, and then we're gonna fucking spray you know sprinkle some magic fucking Nintendo Fairy dust on it. They got that <laughs> magic Nintendo dust, yeah, and they make got it that fucking stuff. wonderful. You know, wow. like so. I you know I finished Horizon and I really did enjoy the storyline. Like I I absolutely enjoyed it, but the entire time I was playing Horizon, I was like. Man, I can't wait to get back to Zelda. Uh, <laughs> like, I can't wait to get back to Zelda. And yeah. So, Robbie, you've been playing a lot of Zelda, and you've been playing on the Wii U, and I'd really like to mm-hmm. hear your your thoughts of your time with uh, Zelda. For sure. So I, I'm i going to say quickly, I've spent about, I'd say, 10 hours playing the game. I'm not, like, ridiculously far into it. Yeah. What I've played, though, so far, I love the game. I really do. Have uh, you gotten to I the don't... first beast? What's that? Have you gotten to the first beast? First beast. What do you mean, first beast? I don't want to put any more detail on it. I don't want to. Spoil I don't think it. I know what you mean, but okay. Uh, I mean, I've gotten past the first initial area where you go down and you take mm-hmm. the. Um, I 
can I think? You get the paraglider? What is it called? Paraglider. Thank you. I don't know what's wrong with me today. Uh, yeah, paraglider. You jump off the edge. I like. I haven't gotten much further than that. What I've played though, the game's wonderful. I just really like the combat. I think the world is gorgeous. And for a Wii U game, it really impresses me. I have to tell you guys, for a Wii U game, it's impressive. The game, sometimes it looks kind of rough around the edges, I won't lie. Like, you can see, you know, it kind of looks a bit jaggy, and it's not the sharpest resolution. There are other times where the lighting is beautiful, and the game genuinely looks good. It looks really nice, and I really like the way it looks. Unfortunately, there are some frame rate hitches. Like, you'll just randomly pan the camera, you know, to the right. There's mountains off in the distance. The frame rate will start to hitch. That's not so fun when that happens, but it's like it never affects the game. It is a fantastic game from what I've played. I really just, it's magical. It is. There's something about it that's magic. really wonderful. That's, that's the thing about this game. Nintendo magic. It's got it's that something. Nintendo magic. It, not every yeah. Nintendo game has it, right? The last couple of Zeldas, in my opinion, didn't have it. You're right. Uh, yeah. Like on the on the on the consoles, because actually, 3DS I think that, does. Yeah, yeah. The 3DS the last one on 3DS definitely had it. Uh, what was that called? It was Link Between Link Worlds. Between Worlds. Link Between yeah. Worlds. That, yeah. that game was phenomenal. But this game, you walk around, and it's like it's just like everything you see, graphically. Like if you technic put it on a technical level and stack it up to Horizon. It doesn't stand a chance, right? It's a, there's not yeah. the level of detail. There's not the the resolution. It's not. It's in 720 or 900p. Especially not on Wii U, it's like not even close, yeah, right? It's, it's like it, like technically, it's not even in the same league. But in immersion and in charm and in in art style, in my opinion, it blows it away. Like it's yeah, it's I, I, you know it's it's. There is magic in this game. I, it's a wonderful game. You know, I think game. you nailed it with that word. Let, let me just say this, all right? I, I get very seldom do I get this kind of enthusiasm from you guys about a game. And I, I know you, Briar. We've been together now for years. It's, yeah. It's just very few games. Like when Destiny first came out, you had this same degree of excitement. And it's so, it's I guess it's kind of jarring to, to hear this consensus amongst everybody I know who's played this game. It makes me want to put Horizon down, but it's like in the back of my mind, I can't do it. Don't right. do it. I, I can honestly say, don't do it. Finish Horizon. Enjoy your time yeah. with Horizon. Take your time. Don't because, rush. But definitely, as soon as I get, at least that'll give me a, a real, a true perspective on it. Because if I love Horizon this much, and I know I'm going to love Zelda, I've always been a huge Zelda fan. Yeah. If this is as good as everybody says it is, how, how is that even possible? It's I mean, tens across the board. And it's not a perfect game. Zelda is not a perfect game. Like, it's got all sorts of problems. Like, mm -hmm. the inventory management kind of is a fucking pain in the ass. That is a pain. Constantly, your inventory's full. Stuff breaks nonstop. Yeah. Like, all the I don't time. mind the breaking thing. Once I, for me, once I figured out that if I break something over somebody's head, it does double damage, That's it nice. became a. <laughs> Yeah. It became a benefit. <laughs> like, oh, okay. <laughs> now I've now I've got to like strategize when I want to break this weapon. Like I might have two or three weapons that are about to break, and like <laughs> use them all. Yeah, fuck it. You know, this guy's gonna get a couple of weapons broken over his 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 head. <laughs> over his <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and that's cool. <laughs> but the inventory management part of it is a pain in the ass. You also oh, got like constantly. You've got full. this Nintendo yeah. like controller that. Look, I love the controller itself. I, I use the Pro Controller, and I, I adore the controller. It feels great. But the buttons are all, like, why can't we just all, as an industry, come to some kind of, like, consensus? Standard, yeah. Or standard. Like, where, you know, if you're going to have a run and a jump button, like, make the run, if, and it's a first-person or third-person game, make the run the left stick. Don't make that crouch. Because yeah, every other fucking right? game, it's the left stick. Right. right. So, yeah. like, I'm constantly mixing that up. Or, like, every game should have remappable controls. Like, you know, just every game. Why not? Why don't we have this in this in this industry? Why can't every fucking game? Because or or every console needs to have that. Like the PlayStation Four, you can remap the buttons. I much prefer the game. It's implemented in the game as opposed to the console because that's better. If it's change implemented it for every in game. the console, then I got to change it for every game. If you're, I, you're absolutely right. If it's implemented in the game, then I. I change it once for the game and it just stays that way. You know, yeah, it's a part of my right. save file. Uh, I mean, at least Sony did it, right? Sony Sony made that happen and I appreciate it. But it's like, it's the weirdest thing. Is like, on my controller, the de default is X, which is at the top of the controller. Mm. This button is jump. Huh? Yeah. 
That's so yeah. weird. <laughs> it is. Yeah, it's it is not, on Wii U as well. It. You can switch it because the default is A. Uh, I'm sorry. This is B down here. B is run, and this is jump. That's so, so weird. You don't yeah. have, you know how, you, normally you hold run, and then you roll run, your thumb you, on to jump, right? Jump, yeah. can't you jump. can't do that. You can switch it, so this is jump down here, and this is run, but you're still <laughs> in the same position where you can't roll your thumb. Oh, Maybe if you have weird. really skinny thumbs, you can hold, you know, it goes between. <laughs> <laughs> That's a skinny ass thumb, bro. Yeah, but like, I just, I would love to come to that place as an industry where you can, you can have remappable buttons on like anything you want. So if I've been playing a lot of Horizon, you know, why can't I just remap the controls so I'm familiar with them, you know? Yep. Instead of having I hear you. Also, why do the buttons have to be named different on every controller? <laughs> yeah, B and A and X and Y, they're opposite on the yeah, they're Nintendo like the controllers. I can't get Xbox. over that. Now, that's it Xbox's fault. Nintendo had their shit up set up first. So honestly, like Xbox should have just taken that shit over, right? Right, but we're so used that. to it. Yeah. yeah, but it's a it's a pain in the neck that stuff. It's weird. I constantly hit. Yeah, I'm like Y to, or X to jump or whatever, and then I'm hitting the one on the left. I'm like, isn't that X? I'm like, oh wait, no, it's up here. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. I had to play like God of War constantly. on this console, I'd be lost. <laughs> like, with all this <laughs> quick time events, I'd be like, what? I, every time I gotta look down I'm at the, the fucking button controller to figure oh, out what button I'm hitting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Pretty yeah, much. so basically, I'm looking forward to you getting your hands on Zelda. I it's know you a have it. Game. You have yeah. it in your possession. It's just, uh, I would definitely finish Horizon first, though. I Take think that's, your time that's with Zelda. It's smart. a wonderful game. Like, don't rush in to get it. You have a week or two until Mass Effect comes out as well. So, oh you'll God, have shut up, Robbie. It, there's not enough time for any of this. Okay, first of all, Mass Effect. I know. Is, <laughs> it's it, a lot. It, it has to be played. That's just one of my favorite franchises of all time. God damn it, I'm really pissed off thinking about that. You better uh, finish Horizon Zelda, quick. Zelda, had, I'm, I'm taking my time. Horizon I thought you for weren't me. a Mass Effect fan. Am I crazy? Was I talking to somebody else? I thought you didn't like Mass Effect. Are you insane? He said he was I... a Final Fantasy fan too. When oh, we you got that one, Robbie. You got... <laughs> really? You said the shit. Oh, like that. that's Let's... a callback joke. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was pretty good. See, Briar's saying it's a callback <laughs> joke. Callback joke. <laughs> so, are you a Mass Effect fan? Like you're a Final Fantasy fan? I absolutely am. Okay, I listen to Club Afterlife <laughs> so... MP3 in my car every day, on the way to work downtown Atlanta. God damn it. It's one of my favorite games. And, and I am I honestly Mass thinking about... Too, but the ending did suck. I'm honestly thinking about uh, waiting on Mass Effect. Because it is... It, there is this multiplayer component to it. But I'm honestly wait, thinking about waiting. Because we got, we're going to talk in the news about Destiny a little bit later. There is a lot of Destiny content coming in the very <laughs> new future. And that comes a week after Mass Effect. And I don't know that I want to like try and crush Mass that. Effect <laughs> into one week. You know, whereas maybe if I wait till the summer, like midsummer, I'm going to have a little more right. time and I can really like play through Mass Effect and enjoy it. But I'm honestly Especially thinking April, about just waiting on it. There's not much coming out, I don't think. Like there's a break in April and then that's maybe what I'm waiting for. Out, I'm, so. I really am. I'm waiting April for is going to be all about this. Destiny for me. It's going to be yeah. just okay. raid, raid, raid every day. <laughs> I, I just, I just Rain. need a break. Rain. It seems like Rain. every other week there's an amazing game coming out that we've been waiting for. And they're all open and world games too. They're yeah, huge, like, huge. I just games. can't yeah. play them. It's like right now Horizon. Then after Horizon, I want to play Zelda. And in the back of my mind, I need to finish Rise of the Tomb Raider. I need to finish Resident Evil Seven. I gotta play uh, oh, Mass Effect and Resident Evil. Right? So it's like so good. But I'm trying to keep up with the Jones. Who the hell are the Joneses anyway? I never met these fucking people. I'm trying to keep up with them and have everything that comes out. And you can't finish all the games. You just you can raise your hand and say, I own them. It sucks. I just need a break. Developers, please, just slow down. Nah, you know? fuck that. Keep it going, man. This is awesome. This fuck is that. Don't slow down. <laughs> to date, like, you're sitting here. It's March 12th. I, I would challenge say anybody that again. to find a game... Find a year that has been this action packed this quick in March from the start. From yeah. the from the get go. Like I mean, up to this point, best year of gaming. Best yeah. year of video games. Like we're on track and to I can be the remember. best year of games in a long, and long time. The shit is just gonna keep hitting the fan, man. Like it's like you look at the release schedules and the games that are like rumored to be releasing at the end of the year, and it's just gonna be it's gonna be a Fucking insane year. It's going to be one of those years that people will remember for like a long time to come. 
God yeah. damn, remember 2017? There wasn't enough time to play all the fucking awesome games that came out. We got a console launch. Two, we got two console launches. Oh, we got, yeah. We got a new Mass Effect. We got a new Zelda. We got, you know, Horizon Zero Dawn. We got a new Destiny. We got a new Red Dead. We got, like, all this fucking crazy Crazy. Shit. Crazy. <laughs> it, <burns laughs> awesome. it is so nuts, though. No, this, is, this is this is something else that's coming out. I don't know if this has been on your radar, Briar, as a PSVR owner, but there's a game coming out. I think in May. It's called Farpoint. Farpoint, and it's got the it's got a gun controller. Oh, yes. that's gonna be cool. Yeah, yeah. I can't Briar, wait for this. Kate and I watched this, you know, kind of featurette on this thing today. The game looks incredible. Kind of yeah. reminds me of like a Halo type of world. But they, they're, they're comparing it to, like, Starship Troopers. There's these insects you're, like, on Mars or Mars-like planet. Uh -huh. You got this actual gun, and you actually look down sights. Very similar to what you've been doing with the HTC Vive. Yeah. The game looks incredible. They're saying it's, like, a five-hour campaign, which is pretty good for a VR game. But it looks like a real game. Is this something that's on your radar? Because yeah, I think I've been looking at this game. It, like, it's one of those ones where it's like, I, I just want to hear a review of it before I buy it because... It's eighty dollars to get it yeah, with the with, with the, the gun, controller, yeah. and I I don't know is the gun does a move controller go into the gun or is it it's built it's built into it I think it's, it's separate built, it's like a so it's all it's yeah, yeah. controller yeah it's, it's built into thing. it so you don't, yeah yeah I mean it looks cool like the game looks really cool I don't know if it's locomotion or like warp to move like teleport to move yeah. no you move around well the, the way the gun is made. There's an analog controller, like a traditional PS4, on the front portion of the gun. Where you move around with that, and you can so pull you the do. trigger. It's got, it's got real locomotion. Yeah, real locomotion, just like a regular Man, first person shooter. that sounds awesome. I can't wait. I can't so wait. When you were I'm trying to remember the, the game you were playing on your HTC Vive, which is like this military Onward. shooter. Onward. Onward. When yeah. I saw that, I was like, my God, I want something like that on the VR, but I'm not that PC guy. And this Is, is there going to be a multiplayer one thing this? I, It is multiplayer. Oh! Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's not competitive, though. It's it's co-op. It's co-op multiplayer. So you actually play oh, through. Oh, man. Yeah. I uh, know. But Can't I mean, it's a good. It's a, shut up, Robbie. It's still a good start. <laughs> you could try. Uh, the game looks great. Um, and that's something I, I think I'm going to end up picking up in May. It's just another little side note of the year. It's, yeah. a, it's a crazy ass year. It really is a crazy year. I can't believe three months in and we've got all these glorious games and I'm so in love with the game I'm playing now. I know I'm going to be in love with the next game I play. And you know, I've been hearing great bigger. things about on uh, the PSVR too is dirt. Really? Yeah, I've been hearing amazing things. Apparently, they patched the game to include PSVR, um, and it's you know it looks phenomenal. It plays phenomenal. It's a much more simmy racing game than you know something like Drive Club. So you actually have to like spend the time to get good. But you know it's rally car racing where you're you're in a sports car on you know off road right and you're going as fast as you can and like you're you know you're jumping through the air you know going over hills just flying through the air apparently the fucking game is amazing I just haven't had a chance to pick it they up yet patched it and it, is it like Drive Club now like the way you actually sit in the car mm -hmm. and everything yeah you sit in the car and you drive like that uh, it supports uh, steering wheels and pedals so you can. Clamp those onto your desk. What? It's like you're really in there, you know, with a racing wheel. Like, that is cool as shit, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't oh wait God. to check that out. Uh, I haven't I haven't had a chance to buy it yet, but I, I definitely plan on giving that one a shot. The problem is, right, is that I know that if I like it, then I'm going to be going over to Thrustmaster looking for one of those $300 racing wheels. I'm like, God damn it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> shit. Yeah, man. I, I, well, with with the PlayStation Update 4.50, PlayStation VR got a plethora of updates to its tracking, uh, yeah. to the actual monitor. So, like, if you're playing VR and people are watching on the monitor, the monitor actually had an update to the resolution and the way the image is that actually conveyed. Yeah, it looked like yeah. crap before. I haven't really had a chance to... I've been playing Horizon. So, if you've seen it, let me know if, if you noticed a difference. But it's really exciting, the kind of things that they're coming out with that are improving the way we play on PlayStation and across the, the board in gaming in general. They also introduced a feature where you can play a 3D Blu-ray in your PlayStation yeah. and watch it in your headset, your PlayStation VR, and get like the full 3D effect in your PlayStation VR, which I really want to check out. I think that's a cool-looking thing. Yeah, and, and I think there's also an update to the PlayStation like theater, like when you're watching films. I don't know if they added a theater now, but that whole experience has been updated as well. Supposedly, it's yeah, much better. Yeah, they improved the resolution and... 
made it made it look a lot better because that was a bad experience before. Have you tried that yeah, before? It, yeah, I, I oh, have. It, it was pretty. Yes, it's pretty bad. <laughs> and I also wanted I wanted a nice theater to sit in too. And I'm thinking of buying another PSVR uh, because today my wife was watching that Farpoint and she's like, "Oh, we got to play this together." And I was like, "You don't really like VR in general, but you're going to play this. We'll see." So. Hey, where last you? on last week's uh, Dusty Community Podcast, Tefty was. I, I was telling him about playing VR, like uh, I, was ta- I was actually talking about Star Trek Bridge Crew, and I was saying, yeah, you can have like six people in VR playing we together. Play oh, man. And he's like, wait, you have to have six VRs, and like it clicked that he was like talking about like in the same room. I'm like, you know, the <laughs> online player. <laughs> <laughs> but then it suddenly created this idea of a, imagine having six people in the same room all playing VR, like just running into each other. And shit. <laughs> like, it just sounded like a fucking brilliant fucking YouTube video. <laughs> Somebody wanna, make that game now. I want to try to get five like people that. together with VR headsets all in the same room so we can just that, that's act like we be walk at each other in the head constantly. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Horrible. Um, yeah, that PSVR, the 4.5 update was pretty huge for PlayStation. Not just PlayStation VR, but PlayStation Pro users got the and PlayStation boost mode. Um, like all sorts of fucking updates in that thing. It's external really good. hard drive support. External up to hard eight, drive support. Eight terabytes. Yeah, for, for up to eight terabytes, it's insane. Um, but I have heard some complaints, and I haven't heard it, these things acknowledged by Sony, but apparently some people who have gotten update 4.5 have been complaining about higher latency in multiplayer games. Ooh, that's mm, That's not good. Yeah. So hopefully, I, I don't know if this is real or if this is perceived. I, I only read about it on Reddit, but I read a few posts about it, like a bunch of people complaining about it. So more than one person has kind of like pointed this out. So if it is a thing that's happened... Hopefully Sony jumps right on that and gets that fixed. Yeah. DJ Bro. Man in chat says, FIFA VR anyone? <laughs> Fuck no, no. No, thank you. <laughs> Hell no. No, that's the game. You guys got to get six people together to play FIFA VR in the okay. same room. With six people? Yeah, maybe. Oh, yeah. kicking each other. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like just nut shot after nut Kick shot. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking maybe Brookhaven. Brookhaven would be a great game to get six people together to play in one room. Everybody's heads would get knocked off. People swinging around, punching each other in the face. Oh, it'd, yeah. Sure. It'd be horrible. All right, so it sounds like this week, well, the last week, we've had nothing but Horizon Zero Dawn and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. You guys let us know in the comments what you've been playing for the last week, and we'll get started with our news for episode 146 of the Beastly Thought Show. Robbie, would you like to get us started? For sure. Let's do it, guys. All right. Mass Effect Andromeda is getting an early access trial through EA Access starting on March 16th. Players will be able to play for 10 hours or up until a certain part of the game's main story. Hmm. That's, uh, I have that's, some questions here. Uh, maybe you know the answers to them, because this is actually the first time I'm hearing this news. Mm-hmm. One is, will your progress in the early access get transferred over to the full game when that comes out? Yes. Like if, you, yes. so if you play 10 hours, when you, when you buy the full game, it just starts there? Yeah. That's fucking uh, cool. Yeah. You have to pre-order to get early access? No, it's just through EA Access. EA Access is EA's it. premium service. Oh, where you... okay. Okay, so you get to pay yep. for that. Mm-hmm. That's yeah, I think like it's like $10 what... a month, right? It's like yeah, $35 it's cool. a year, I think. It's it's pretty cheap. It's a yeah, good it's value, and EA Access actually looks like a good service. I would absolutely buy it if it wasn't so many sports games. Like, that just seems like a waste to me. I'm like, I just uh, don't care. It may be worth it just for the month, though, right? Like, do you have to pay your... Uh... Like it's it's, it's fairly inexpensive, bro. I think EA Access is like thirty thirty five dollars a year, so it's it's really yeah, it's inexpensive. Not much. It's not too bad. Like if you you know if you're really into Mass Effect and you want to start a little bit early, fuck. I wonder if I could stream that. That would be awesome. Yeah. Ten hours, you can break out your Xbox One and dust it off, Briar. Get some Mass yeah, Effect. Yeah, that's the Xbox One though. Ah, it's Xbox One only. Yeah, well, EA well, yeah, Access yeah, is only Access. on the Xbox. Yeah. Yeah. EA said, no, PlayStation, we don't care about 60 really million consoles. I really want to play consoles. that game on PC. Look at you, mm. Briar. What has happened to our friend Briar? Look at you. Look He's grown up, up Briar. I, I used to know He's you. He's growing up. <laughs> You're growing up. Yeah, you grew up. You advanced hey. the PC master race. That's right. He sure is. Look at, doesn't he look foreboding in that black backdrop? He just looks like a PC gamer. 
He's so handsome, though, and growing up. Good for you, Rar. Thank you, Robbie. I love you, too, buddy. Oh. <laughs> All right, so Outlast 2 will be released April 25th for PS4, Xbox One, and PC for $30. The same day, a bundle with both Outlast 1 and 2 with all DLC will be available for $40. Hell yes, I loved the first Outlast. Cannot wait for this game. It was so good. It scary was as shit. so bad. It was scary what? as shit. Right. <laughs> you so good bad it was scary, yeah. Okay. I watched you play Resident Evil 7. You're the uh, best for horror games sorry i it's- look with resident evil 7 it was a different scenario where i was i was really enveloped in like wow this technology is amazing and like i'd never played like a full game in vr plus i was streaming it i stre- streamed every moment of that game and yep. at every point i had the chat it was like having somebody with I their shoulder with their arm on my shoulder you know like the whole time the chat was there with me like i i got freaked out a couple of times and I but they were there to that helmet up, We were there the to chat. hold your hand. Yeah, it was. It's like having somebody there to hold. It's like having an adult there to hold my hand. I'm like, or, or many adults, just like having <laughs> a classroom of children yes, surrounding you. Outlast, I tried in a dark room by myself. I think I played 45 minutes of that game, <laughs> and I, I, I left the room. I went downstairs. My wife is sitting on the couch, and I'm like, my heart is like. <laughs> it's an intense game. Yeah, it's so intense. I'm like, you cannot believe the shit I just saw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck I, I can. Only, I, I'm trying to imagine it because you know everybody watching the show. Briar is a very manly looking man. He's a manly man. He's a modern day Clint Eastwood. And <laughs> you, you can Clint Eastwood. you you can just imagine uh, Briar in the movie nice. theater with his wife, and they happen to go into the wrong film, and then something scary happens, yeah, and she reaches like over, and, over, she reaches over, over and covers his eyes and says, "It's going to be okay, honey. It's going to be all right." <laughs> she reaches over to grab too. my hand. She doesn't realize that I've already grabbed like some neighbor's hand. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> This dude next to me is like, dude. <laughs> Whoa, who the hell are you? Now, Brian, that sounds that sounds like it may have actually happened. That just that came or a little too quick. He's like, we're in this together. I'm sorry. Confirmed. <laughs> you held hands with another man. Confirm. Yes. Oh uh, man, I used we to gotta be go- at a movie podcast, and the guy who ran the podcast loved fucking horror movies. Horror movies, yeah. So he'd send me to see these horror movies in the theater. <laughs> And right, my time to watch horror movies or movies was like a Tuesday yeah. during the matinee. Right, that was like a perfect time for nobody me. there. Nobody. The fucking movie theater is completely empty. I'm the only person in that movie theater watching a fucking scary movie. <laughs> you have no one there. To come I had to go you. to the back of the theater because I couldn't stand having all that open space behind me because it freaked me out. I was yeah. kind of like. <laughs> <laughs> and then, like half the time, I'm staring at my phone because, like, you know, that you creepy music it. starts coming, and you're like, you just wait for that jump scare. I'm like, fuck it, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not participating <laughs> in this bullshit. Yeah, they're playing Angry Birds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I hate uh, scary movies. Remind me to take you to the movies, Brian. We all have to go see a scary movie together. together. I One promise day. you, that's going to be great. We all got to uh, do it. All right, so Nintendo has confirmed that micro SD cards can't be used on multiple Switch consoles. Yep, because it's, it's code. Because it's, I guess, once you insert it into your Switch console, it's going to be tethered to that account, and you can't like take the games out and put it into another Switch it's console. So if you have a save on your micro your SD card, saves are stuck on one console too. Yeah, that's the other thing. Oh, that's well, bullshit. I don't see why. I, I don't see why it is, though. Honestly, I think that it makes perfect sense because if you have a play, PlayStation Four or an Xbox and you need to transfer a save, you're able to do that because it's going from you know a home console to another home console. But when you have the Switch, you take it the this console. Is a home console. You. you take it with you. It's a portable, so there's really no need to to move your save to another Switch console because the Switch is the portable itself. So to me, that actually makes sense. It does. Come on, man. <laughs> That's yeah. the comeback, Brian, really? Come on, man. What are your like, thoughts? I mean, I have a lot of consoles, I buy multiple consoles, right? Yeah, I mean, too. I understand that I'm in a privileged position, and not everybody can afford to do that. You but for me, it's really convenient up. because I, I can have one up in the office where I create gaming content, and then I can have one down in the living room where I just, you know, I play. feed up, chill out in the couch, and just play for, you know, enjoyment's sake. If I'm playing Zelda, it'd be really nice if I could just grab a, you know, grab a stick, 
a memory stick with the save on it and bring it downstairs. Because, God forbid, they have like a cloud save option, which is just utterly fucking ridiculous. That's way too hard for Nintendo to figure out. Yeah, they can't it do It is that. true. With the Switch, I have the unique privilege of just putting a dock down there. Yeah. And I could just pick it up and you know bring the whole console with me. But still, like, I don't know. It'd be nice if it's... you could just switch. I understand they don't want you bringing games over from console to console, but it'd be nice if you could do saves. Yeah. Hmm. I wonder if that'll be an option, though, to buy, like, an additional dock. Like, if you got multiple TVs and you it maybe... It's $90. Fuck that. Oh, Nintendo. Come $90. On, man. Come on, guys. Yeah. Someone uh, took the, the the dock apart, and there's, like, one little tiny motherboard, like, in the bottom corner, and everything else is just empty. We're going to charge $90 yeah, for it's it, though, for board. Nintendo. Basically... All the video and audio comes out of that USB-C port on the bottom of the Switch and goes to a little breakout box that uh, that breaks out the HDMI. Yeah, well, yeah it's not, it's I don't think it's worth too. 90 bucks. It's kind of insane. Not even close. It's Wait, worth like chat $30. has a really good point. What happens when you break your Switch? Mm. I don't know. What happens when your kid breaks your Switch? That's yeah. when you go. That's when you send them out to the yard. When, uh, that's when you send them out to the yard to get a switch, <laughs> and you what lose two hundred you... hours of Zelda. Oh God! Ooh, you know what? I think oh, it's a good God. idea that Nintendo called it a switch because if your children break it, then you can send them out to the yard to get another one. You that's remember bullshit. that? Hey, there should totally. Be... Yeah, I do. Unfortunately, remember. I remember. That. Go get a big one. You bring <laughs> me a small one. I'm gonna pick it up day. myself. <laughs> I was talking to my kid the other day. I'm like, you know, back in my day, it was easier to discipline a kid. We just got beat. <laughs> hey, that makes sense. And he just looked at me and laughed. I'm like, wasn't funny. <laughs> you got that shit right. It sure wasn't. <laughs> wasn't funny. <laughs> you know, back in my day, you get you get your ass whooped by a relative that, that you, fucking re- school. you hardly knew. I did. Yeah. Miss Durkin. I heard Miss that. Durkin. Oh, yeah, man. you heard I feel so old, Robbie. Yeah, back, we turned out okay, Robbie. Miss Durkin, she had a yeah, honeycomb hair. You motherfuckers, honey- though, we'll see. Yeah, we got, we got. <laughs> you know what? The jury's still out for your generation, the jury's still Robbie. Out. Yeah. We're undecided. Yeah. When, when I when I was a kid, when I was a kid, you go to family events and then you get your ass whooped by a relative you rarely knew. You hardly knew him. Yeah. Like, aren't you my? Are you my cousin? What? Ow! You were trying a to third cousin out. just getting the belt. You know. Nowadays, uh, they just you know send you a tweet and tell you you're bad. <laughs> DJ man's back in my day. Back in my day. <laughs> you got that right, DJ. Back in my uh, day. That's what happens. You guys man. actually got belted as kids. Like I didn't... are you? Are you joking? You serious? You seriously asking that? Because uh, I didn't. I don't know. I've just it's a weird thing. I've well, never well, grown up with gotta, that. You got to keep in mind, Canada customs are kind of different. You guys, I I heard you guys get whooped with candy, uh, cotton candy. Like they grab like a whole thing of cotton. No, 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 no. It's frozen maple syrup, actually. It's, it's just frozen right. into a stick. Listen, yeah. man, we got My dad speak. would use his hand, but my my mother would use a fucking wooden spoon. Oh, the big one on the wall. Oh, man, that fucking hurt. <laughs> like, <laughs> Robbie, I, I think I got slapped with a spoon a couple times, actually. Oh, You're right. Yeah? I think I did. Yeah. Listen, guys, my mom and dad had the little, it was a giant wooden spoon and a fork, and it was on our wall, and it was, deco- it was like decorative. And my dad broke the spoon on me, and I was probably eight years old. <laughs> Those fucking, Your those, dad was using the wooden spoon? Fuck. My dad that used the fucking like wooden spoon. It sure did. Uh, you know, it, it gets to a point where you don't feel the pain. You're just still shocked. You can check this out. Not only was my dad whooping my ass, but he was literally working for the National Child Abuse Prevention Foundation. <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> that's how acceptable it was. <laughs> like, your kid got out of shape. You threw him a whooping. That's how <laughs> that's how parenting worked. Give him an ass whooping. And, and, and look, Briar, it worked out pretty good. I think we're all pretty upstanding citizens. I can only imagine what the call to your dad must have been like. Listen, I'm really getting fucking tired of Timmy. I beat him with a racetrack, and Briar's dad says, "Listen, don't hit him with the racetrack. Just use your hand. If you really get upset, <laughs> grab the spoon on the wall." <laughs> Shit. But you know that was old school discipline. And yeah. to be totally honest. That's that's how my children are disciplined. You, no, guys you just take away a kid's phone. That's how you discipline them. I you don't can't know if it's discipline the same them though. anymore. It's impossible. Yeah, it's, impossible. yeah, it's not the same. You're totally right, though. It's not the same. It's. You know what? You just call. Me. I live in a little a little circle of my own life. I definitely do. Continuing on, the Nintendo Switch is currently the fastest selling console ever for Nintendo. Currently outpacing the Wii's first week on the market. Shit. So. 
this is uh, take this with a grain of salt because you yeah, got to remember how we how the Wii it. was so constrained at launch. Like there's so much about the Wii that was hard to produce for Nintendo. So if you remember, it was like a good year before the Nintendo Wii was like available on store shelves, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Um, too. So the Switch is very popular, and that's a great sign for Nintendo. But comparing it to the Wii, yeah, it sold faster than the Wii because you couldn't find a fucking Wii because Nintendo literally could not make them fast enough. Those those gyroscopes and motion controllers were incredibly hard to find. Remember, you couldn't fi- even if you found a Wii. You, you wanted to go find them. motion controllers, you couldn't find those. Yeah. Yeah, but I think that they did something really similar with the Switch, though, Briar. I think that the Switch is also incredibly hard to find. It's not like they're everywhere out there in the market. I got really lucky. My wife called me at Walmart and said, hey, there's a guy just looking at a Switch right here. You want it? And I ended up getting that, and it was just pure luck. because I was able to... want it. Yeah. You what know woman it... ask a man that anyway? We always you want it. You haven't played any of it. I know. I always but... want it. Uh, I, I gotta tell you, I'm incredibly happy that I ended up, you know, I was really considering canceling my pre-order mm-hmm. and getting Zelda for the Wii U, because we have a Wii U in the house. So I can honestly say, I am very happy with the hardware. I know there are, we're going to get to hardware, pro- we are going to get to hardware problems, right? We have a story later? We do, yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about that a little later, and a lot of that is to be expected when you're an early adopter. You know, early adopters get, like... You might as well bend over, right? You're, you're, it's coming. It's coming in hot. <laughs> bend over and take it, son. Because, <laughs> you know, early adopters, you pay more and you get inferior hardware. That's just the way Absolutely. of that's Always the way has of been. It. Always yeah. will be. But I can say that I really do like being able to just grab that thing and play a little Zelda in bed. Play a little Zelda. You know, just bring it downstairs while I'm watching. It's the dream. Play a little Zelda. Dream. Go outside while I'm like, you know, letting the dogs out. I like to be out there with the dogs. It's fucking really Jason cold Zelda. right now, but playing a little oh, Zelda, yeah. man. Yeah. I can't wait for more games to come out for this thing. I'm definitely going to pick up Blaster Master. There's actually three games I'm really interested in at launch right now. Blaster Master yeah, I heard about that, is yeah. out there, and the Shovel Knight prequel I've heard is fantastic. Uh, is so that out? That's out, yeah. Oh, that, that's something that I'm, I'd be interested in as well. I actually sold... Uh, my my brother's wife, my sister in law, uh, the idea of buying a Switch ASAP last night at my birthday party. Uh, they saw it sitting in front of my TV. I keep it in the living room because it's pointless to keep it in here because I'll never put Nintendo content on my YouTube channel. I don't like getting content ID strikes. No but um, she was like, "What is that?" And I told her it's Nintendo's new console, and I took it off the dock and I turned it on, and she was like, "Oh, that's pretty cool. It's like it looks like the Wii U, you know, the Wii U controller." I said, "Yeah, but you can take the controllers off." And she's like, "Why would you take the controllers off?" And I pulled out the little stand. I sat it in front of the TV. She's like, yeah, but it's so far away. I, I said, but it's kind of the idea. You can be at work and be at your desk and play it. She's like, yeah. so this is a really, this is a cool little portable. I said, yeah, but it's not just a portable. I took the 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 controllers, the Joy-Cons, put them back on, sat it in the dock, and then it popped up on the TV, and her eyes just lit up. She said, I want this. Yeah. I want this. That's a brilliant this idea. Is, she's like, this is Concept incredible. Concept alone is what sells it. It's, and, yeah. and, and when they saw how seamless it was, it goes straight to the TV, right back to the to the portable to dock i mean the portable version they were just really sold on they're like this is something new revolutionary and i i think that's the dream we've been waiting on for a long time is nintendo and the I, only one who could have done it though because no. can you imagine sony doing this sony had the idea they had the idea in 2015 something very similar extremely similar by uh looking at their uh patents you know the image looked very similar to the nintendo switch who knows if the controllers actually came off if it was able to go from a portable to uh, a dock version about the vita or is it, it's, it was it was a successor to the Vita that that Sony they and actually they never re- did it. Yeah, well, we don't know if they're actually going to. Do yeah, it. we still record. don't actually know if that's real or not. You know, they they released the they released a patent and it looks very. And this is 2015, Briar. It looked very similar to the the Nintendo Could you Switch. See Sony and, doing that? I could. You know, I think Sony still has. I don't see Sony uh, touching the handheld market with a 10 foot pole. Yeah, well, I don't know. That's hard. Well, look. If if history is any indication, one failure doesn't mean you don't try again. Look, the Wii U Two was a failures, failure. Though. Yeah, but I don't think they had to. There's 80 no, million PSP, 80, 80 million PSPs were sold, Briar. That's a success, no matter how you look. Whether people yeah, bought it to, to mod or not. There, no, that's bullshit. You can't say that's a success no matter how you look at it because it's not a success no matter how you look at it. Yeah, they it's sold like, a lot of hardware, but they didn't sell any fucking games because you could pirate every fucking game for it. True. Well, so like there was no fucking developer support for it because they knew that if they put a game out for PSV, PSP, then it would just get pirated and nobody would buy it anyway. 
So yeah, yeah, they sold a lot of hardware. It's it's a, ha- a cup half full, half empty type of situation because they could have ended up selling twenty million. And they then they, sold... they came out with the Vita, and that thing I think has been that, that, a, that an only... abject failure, right? Like that's all. It's twenty two million units. It's dead. Yeah. It, I mean, it sucks because I think that hardware was really cool, especially the second generation that they made. Um, but there's there's not a lot of compelling software for it. But yeah. it's Unless the same situation it. with the Wii U, though, Brian. What you're saying right here is the exact same situation with the Wii U. The Wii U, it, it sold abysmally. It was just a, a, yeah. a very poor selling console and didn't sell a ton of games either, even though they got right. great Nintendo exclusives. But look what Nintendo came out with a successor, and it's doing really well. I mean, just yeah, because it's like you're a well, different thing. It's so early, though. You can't say it's really going to do well. The yeah, Switch is so in question that still. That is very true. If it's but what I'm asking, well. the original question was, can you imagine <clears throat> another company making a similar product to the to the Switch? And I, I can't. I can't see Microsoft doing it because... They wouldn't. No. Like, no. Microsoft... You know, they, have, if, they have no history in that field at all. They just they go in blind. And I can't see Sony doing it because, like... I Unless absolutely it was a good. successor to the Vita, like the PSP Vita line, which I just don't think that they have any interest in doing it. Like, not in their financial position right now, because, you know, Sony is not in good shape, right? The Sony PlayStation division is in great shape. Is. Yeah. But they're carrying that entire fucking corporation. They absolutely are. And so it, any mistake they fucking make could sink the whole detriment. ship. It's <laughs> cost them quite a lot. Yeah. So, like, betting on a PSP2 or a Switch-like device, imagine if it had the power of a PlayStation 4. That would be oh. amazing. Oh. But how much would that thing cost, and would they be able to sell it? Well, look, if you it's look, at the, his- if you look so at the history, risky. Sony has been moving in that direction for years. The PSP, you were actually able to buy a peripheral that you could plug into the bottom of the PSP and play it on your television. They wanted to make the PSP kind yeah, of. Yeah, I had that. Ultimate. That thing sucked. The play, but I'm telling you what the, the direction Sony was going in. Yeah. They want you to be able to have a portable and still put it on the big screen. Same yeah. thing with the PlayStation Vita. PlayStation Vita never had a, like a peripheral, but yeah, they did make the Vita. That, right? they, they had the Vita TV, which is something that allowed you to play Vita yeah, I games had that, on that a TV. Sucked. Yeah, I have it too, and it does. <laughs> but this is the direction that Sony's been going in, and you know, there's been some missteps, but Sony, they make the best choices and sometimes the worst choices in their video game division. And I think that, I don't think they're going to give up on the handheld division. I think that they're, they're going to try one more time. I honestly believe, and I hope they do because they've made incredible hardware. The Vita is one of the most powerful little handheld handhelds I've ever seen. And when it came out, I thought it was going to shake up the world, but it just wasn't supported. If they were able to try one more time, get meaningful developers behind it and maybe have this cross platform ability that the Nintendo switch has, I think it could be incredible. And I mean, I think it's a very real possibility that they would go in that it. direction. I don't see you guys happening. let us know. You guys yeah. let us know in the comment. O- the open up comments. the comments and let us know what no, you guys talking about it in chat. And yeah, I'm looking right now. Um, what do you guys think? Do you think it's possible that, that Sony could come out with something like that? I, I don't think Microsoft, uh, Microsoft doesn't have enough meaningful franchises, but Sony definitely does. They could, they could move a lot of units. I'm going to say maybe with a Vita 2. I don't know if it's likely, though, because I think the people that bought it, people love it. Like, there's no doubt. People really like the Vita that have it. And, I mean, I bought it from day one. And I'll tell you guys, I thought the first year or two was really good. They actually had games consistently coming out. After that, there, there was nothing. Like, it just dropped. There was no games at all, and I sold mine just last year because I'm like, this thing's dead. Like, it's just there's nothing interesting to play on it that I can't either play on PS4 or just nothing really motivating. So it's, you're, you're, you're right. Yeah. You know, very few Vita games have I played that just blew my socks off. First year could, was really good, but after that, it's like, no. No, the launch was, was pretty decent. After that, yeah, really you, know, good you, got, launch, you got a decent a game. You know, Killzone Mercenary was okay, but I mean, you can really count on one or two hands all the good PlayStation Vita games, other than indies. Yeah, yeah there's plenty. Of, there's plenty of meaningful indies that people enjoy, but I'm talking, you know, first party. At this point, my portable gaming experience. is going to be either um, it's, it's going to be the on Switch. A Switch or on an iPhone. Like, I can't play same. games on my phone. I can't. I just can't do it. Well, the phone, the phone. You've never been truly addicted to an iPhone game, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're out there. <laughs> they're there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see. You know, time will tell what will happen. I'm, I'm, I'm never going to bet against PlayStation. I, I think PlayStation is an incredible company, and they, we got some more PlayStation news at the bottom of, of the show. Yeah, let's move on with the news. What, what's yeah. next? Where are we at, Robbie? 
You guys want to stick with the uh, Switch, or you want me to move on to something different? Yeah, move let's... to the next story. Well, okay. wasn't, there, wasn't there specific news about the Switch? Uh, top selling. Mm. Nintendo has responded to reports of the ongoing issues people are experiencing with the Nintendo Switch, including the Joy-Con connectivity issue and the Switch dock leaving scratches on the, the system screen. Reggie yeah. Fiesenet says the feedback is really helping the company to combat the issue and also ask for continued feedback. Yeah. If so, your shit gets scratched up, is Sony going to... Re- I mean, is, is Nintendo going to replace it? I don't think so. Why? That's what they need to do. It, they've like, just said like they're pretty much not going to. They sucks. did say that, basically. So that they're I've not going to replace I've it. I've seen a couple of really good ideas. Obviously, you could buy screen protectors. Uh, it would... When I first saw the design of this but thing, I'm like... the dock should gonna... not scratch it. Like, that's stupid. Come on. Well, anytime you drag something across a plastic screen, you got to expect it to scratch, right? When I first like saw I said, the design of this thing, yeah. when I first saw the design of this thing, I, like my first thought was like, "Isn't that going to scratch the screen?" Like every time you dock it, so I figured You're oh, right. they must have like a felt pad or something. That's yeah. what I thought too. Like not, they wouldn't let that happen. There is one, yeah. but it's like way down at the bottom. So I've got, I've already got a screen protector on order. It hasn't arrived yet, but it's like I, I don't want to fuck with the thing at all until I get that screen protector on because I it drives me crazy to have a scratch screen, uh, like yeah. real crazy. Although once they're lit up, you can hardly see them anyway. <laughs> you know, everybody's had a scratch on their. their and and the screen, only right? the only way that we can uh, charge these things is by putting it in the dock. Correct? They don't. You, they don't uh, have like an extra no, cord. You can, you can plug plug a USB C into it. Okay. Okay. Sweet. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you want it docked. You know, if you want to play on your TV or whatever, you're going to be taking this thing in and out theoretically. Mine stayed mostly in, but uh, that's mainly because I've been playing Horizon. I haven't been able to concentrate on. Uh, Zelda, like I want to. Uh, but yeah, that's bullshit. They like, how could they yeah. not have put like a piece of felt in there just to like protect the screen? I mean, th- wouldn't QA go through this over and over again? You to would see? think. And also, like a plastic screen in 2017. That was a dumb idea. They shouldn't have done that. Like, what the fuck? Make that out of like gorilla glass or, or you know, I like would whatever. Think... I'm honestly, I, this is the very first time I'm, I'm hearing that it's plastic, and that's really. That's yeah. hugely disappointing. There are My some God. really strange design design decisions about the Switch. Yeah, plastic yeah. screen. The left Joy-Con doesn't have an antenna. That's why the connectivity issues have been happening, which it's not a hard fix. I wouldn't be surprised if for that things. issue like, we see a hardware recall. Or or Nintendo. There's rumors sending out. Yep. Because it seems like they did a software update, I believe, already, right? And it didn't fix it. There's a lot of talk going around. They're going to recall the left Joy-Con altogether and make wow. it. Wow, this that's really really bad for Nintendo. Let me ask it's you guys a question. Uh, well, Briar, I can ask you. Robbie, not so much. Have you been to the Nintendo eShop on the Nintendo Switch? I I went to it. I think the day that I uh, opened mine up, when I did my yeah. unboxing. There was literally nothing there. It There's more like, there already. Uh, here, I actually have my Switch up because I was playing. I was playing uh, Zelda right before. But there's that. There's more stuff up. They've got. Some stuff that's really not that interesting to me, uh, but other people it might find interesting. Yep. Um, but they've got a few Dio Geo games. I think this is non 1975, King of Fighters 98, Waku Waku Ooh. 7, Ooh, uh, Shock bad. Troopers, World Heroes Perfect, Metal Slug 3. Um, Blaster Master came out. Uh, that was previously oh, yeah. only available in Japan. Boez, I've never heard of. Uh, and then all the stuff that was there at launch. So already and- there's stuff that's come out. Now, and, and I think you mentioned this last week, the, the things that you've bought through Nintendo's online infrastructure in the past do not uh, translate over to the Switch, at least at this point, correct? Not at this point. And, uh, you know, like, that's really disappointing if you've got virtual console games. That virtual console, if you buy something on virtual console, that should definitely transfer yeah. over from console to console. Because yeah. right. it's just a software emulation thing, and that's just bad value. That's just Nintendo being assholes. So if you've bought some, like if you bought Super Mario Three on your on your Wii U, and you bought Castlevania on your on your DS, like all that shit should transfer over, like a hundred percent. And like it, even then, even if they do that, it's confusing because like how many Nintendo IDs do you have at this point? Like seven. <laughs> like I don't even know what yeah. the fuck is like. Like I had to sign up for a new one just to start the Switch. I'm like. Oh, and then I linked another one. I'm like, what? And what happened to the old one? Yeah. <laughs> I don't even know, well, man. I have a book. I have a book, like a hard book, a notebook that I write down uh, passwords for shit in. 
and that I keep in a safe because, like, you just never know, right? Mm -hmm. I have literally seven different Nintendo, like, usernames and passwords. <laughs> what? They're, all, they're all different. Like, they're all That's different insane. things. And I don't know, like, are some of these duplicates because I signed up on different devices? Or are they just different, like, accounts altogether? I don't know. I don't know why Nintendo makes it so goddamn hard. Yeah, I mean, they're you got to go at it. 10 steps to fucking send someone a friend request. I mean, nobody wants to put in a 17-digit code friend to add a friend. Friend codes are back. What the? F but yeah. It's like, really? I, out of, you know, after all the negative publicity. Come on, though. Like, you don't want to see. Are we going to be playing any multiplayer games on here? No. Yeah, absolutely. And we won't be talking. We'll just have to <laughs> use our phones to call each other. Even if I uh, had a Switch, like when that paid service comes out, I wouldn't buy that. Because why would you play multiplayer games on a Nintendo console? Like, there's going to be like two the, of them. The two things I yeah, can think of no. exceptions are Smash Brothers and Splatoon. Uh, Splatoon. Yeah. Maybe Mario Kart. Everything else, it's like, that's it. Like, there's not. Did Google that much. Mario Kart Online? I didn't even know that was a thing. Yeah, it was yeah. online. Yeah. yeah? It, it worked mean, really well, too. Even my kids play that couch co-op. Exactly, though. You can just play a co-op. Like, I don't know. Well, this is good news for the Switch because there's nothing that you can do as far as streaming. No YouTube, no anything. Streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon will come to the Nintendo Switch in time, says Nintendo president and COO Reggie fils -Aimé. Which, one day. One day. Who knows how long it's going to take, though. I, I, I'm technology. sorry, can you repeat that one? Because I was reading comments. I was reading Wilson's comment down there. Stre streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and Amazon will come to oh. the Nintendo Switch in time, says President and CEO of Nintendo of America, Reggie fils -Aimé. Well, that's great news. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's only, you know, super old technology that everybody has on their phones that somehow they couldn't pack in on a console that cost $300. Yeah, but they that rushed this thing out, right? Can we all agree on that? They rushed 100%. They yeah, rushed it. Yeah, the, so they didn't the, have time. The website wasn't even up. You know it was rushed. But this is the kind of thing that adds value in the long run, right? Like yeah, if, if absolutely. we get Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, like all the streaming services that show up, that, that's great. That just makes the Switch even more useful. And the fact that it's got Wi Fi, you know, if I'm on a plane, maybe I get a little bored with playing my video game, I can watch a movie on there. Hey, that's awesome. 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 That's just extra functionality. You know, maybe, maybe because I got a Switch. I'm gonna leave my i my iPad at home because, you know my my Switch does everything I wanted my iPad to do. Plus, it plays Nintendo games. Yeah, you know, like absolutely. that's literally. I I would love to see. I'd love to see an internet browser on this thing. You know. <laughs> Let me ask you a question, Briar and Robbie. When do you think would have been the right time to release the Nintendo Switch? When do you think they would have had everything ready and possibly more games? How much holiday, time do you think they really holiday. needed? Holiday, holiday 2017. Yeah, yeah I wish so they much waited, sense. Honestly. I, I really do wish they had waited. I mean, Same. yeah. I don't it, even the, own it. I wish they it's, waited. It's, it's such a double-edged sword, right? Because The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, one of the greatest games, right? Definitely contender for Game of the Year, just based on what I'm hearing. Yeah. Uh, and that's, that's literally like the only game that people are playing on the Switch. That's, How much better could it have been, too, if they had an extra six months, right? If they had uh, an extra six months to figure out to what the frame rate issue it. is, you know, like, uh, you know, Maybe do a little more work on the inventory management stuff. Like, if they had six more months to work on that game, imagine how much better it would be. Yeah. No, I haven't played it yet. All, from all I'm hearing, it's already great, but it I can't great. wait to see it. It is great, but no game is perfect, you know? No, absolutely yeah. not. Even a game that has a 10, it doesn't mean it's perfect. It means well, it's something it's, special. It's all, it's, it's all subjective, anyway. Our last little bit of news. Actually, yeah, our last story of... of, of Episode 146 of Beastly Thoughts is something we talked about in the past. And, of course, in the past, the Beastly Gamer is always looked at as, as the loon. A new report. <laughs> Look at Brian. That's awesome. Our last report. piece of news, and we haven't talked about Destiny yet? Hold on. Did we skip That's it? That's not our last piece of news, no. All right. I don't see it. All right. We skipped I was going to say, man. Okay. I'm I don't to... see it. Oh, I shit. I a heart attack up in here. I, I felt like this is one of those 3D <laughs> Blu-rays, Brian. I thought you were going to come through the damn 4K screen. <laughs> a, new, a news report this week from an industry analyst says that the PlayStation 5 will be released in the second half of 2018 and will have 10 teraflops of power. 10 teraflops. Pair that to a GTX 1080 for me. Well, it's a console, Briar. It's like comparing a bike to a car. So you're not going to do it. That's what you're saying. No, absolutely not. <laughs> Well, the thing is, this is what I said, and I still believe I'm right. Robbie and I, we talked about this earlier in the week. This is PlayStation is definitely going to do this. They, they might not actually hit that release date, but before the end of the year, 
And also, before the Xbox Scorpio comes out, they're going to reveal that this is something that they're working on, and they're shooting for a twenty-seven, a twenty-eight. Oh god, I don't know about that. that yeah, uh, they will. I'm telling that you, that would be cool if they did, but god, they man. have to. They have to. Uh, and, so and the reason the X Titan X has eleven teraflops. So it's going to be pretty damn powerful. It'll right? be pretty close damn to higher end. Yeah, jeez, yeah. jeez. It'll be close to high end PCs right now. If that yeah, rumor is so to be believed. A year from yeah. now, and a lot of people won't have that type of power on their PC next year. Those well, those uh, graphics cards cost a shit ton of money. Yeah, well, they just came out with the. Uh, and it's six hundred. Out with the uh, 1080 Ti. Yeah, yeah and it's six like six hundred bucks. Bit, yeah, well, the 1080 was 600 bucks till they came out with the 1080 Ti. Now you can buy a 1080 for 500, right? Is it 500 or 400? Not sure. I think it's I'm not 500. Sure I'm not sure either. I, th- it, I think it's 500, yeah. So, let, let, let's be real here. Do you guys think there's a possibility that Sony could preemptively, just kind of the same way they did with Final Fantasy VII Remake, just to win, throw something out there before the Scorpion launches to let people know, let PlayStation fans know that this is not going to be iterative change. This is not going to be a PlayStation 4 Pro. Mm. This is not going to be a boost mode. This is going to be the PlayStation 5. It's going to have all new games made by developers you know and love, and it's going to come out next year just to stop those people who are the undecided voter, the undecided it's gamer. too soon. I don't yeah, know. It's not true, Robbie. PS4 came out in 2013. Why do people keep saying that? Everybody complained about how long the eight, the seventh generation was. Yeah, everybody and, complained. And, and, the, and, and, and right. the reason people are saying it's too soon is because the Pro just came out last year. Yeah, yeah the Pro. That's what's. But the Pro yeah. was only prolonging the console that still came out in 2013. It's like if the if the Super Nintendo only played regular Nintendo games, it's still a Nintendo. It just plays makes them look better, and that's what the PlayStation Four Pro is. It's just a PS4 that makes the games look and run a little bit better. That's yeah. it. It's still a PS4. It's not a new console. Right. And so if somebody, I'd be disappointed if PlayStation 5 is a brand new console. I'd be disappointed if it didn't play PlayStation 4 games. I think at this point it'd have to. You know, uh, with with the initiative that that Microsoft is taking to make backwards compatibility kind of the forefront of the Xbox One, every day you're you're reading stories about these three new games for Xbox backwards compatibility. I think that Sony will definitely lose if they decide not to. That's so easy to do with the new architecture. Yes, x86. It it would be straightforward. Yeah, no, it would. Um. That's cool. I mean, yeah, Narcus said he he sure he read something uh, saying that they're not really worried about the Scorpio. I bet you they are. They, you know, no one's going. Well, they're if, planning if, on you, coming out with the PlayStation Five in 2018. If that's real, if that's their actual plan, then I wouldn't be worried about the Scorpio either. Yeah, well, I mean, that's the thing. Though. They that better, might be the, that might be the reason this. they're not worried about it. If that's true, I would announce it at E3. In the Ooh. same, in similar fashion that, that in Xbox similar fashion Scorp- that the Scorpio was announced at last year's E3, you know, expected in 2017, just a little teaser, because oh. the same fucking water that Xbox threw on the PlayStation Pro, they now have the, the opportunity to throw on the Scorpio to do the same. Yeah, this would be yeah. nuts. I mean, I'm hearing a speculation and rumors that Xbox is actually going to do a, a little bit more of a reveal of the score deal before E3. If Sony were to do that, and, and you're right, Brian, they don't have to do a lot of talking and have 25 developers talking about the power just say of the it's coming. Like that's basically All they gotta what they do, to do is say, yeah. just have just a break. It says PS5, 10 teraflops, the most, 2018. The best the mo- pixels ever. The most yeah, powerful they can't console. say the most powerful console because their competition already is saying that. Yeah, but so they have to come up with not, something that's, new. That, can't, that won't be true anymore, Robbie. It wouldn't be true anymore. At yeah. some point in time, Nintendo right. was the most powerful console. So if, if the Xbox One's the most powerful console, it's true. You yeah, know, the difference uh, though, the difference between what Xbox is doing with the Scorpio and what uh, Sony did with the Pro is that the the Pro was a much smaller leap in power. Absolutely, the Scorpio is a huge leap. Like it's it's a lot more power, man. In that thing, way more. It feels but, like a generational leap. Let, let me say this, okay? And and this is my they thoughts on They could put Xbox Two on there, and I don't think anybody would. They bad could. Eye. Yeah, I think you're right. Honestly, I do. And and it's to me, that'd that be a better idea. This is the the issue that I'm seeing though with Microsoft and with the Xbox Scorpio. Power is the only thing they're touting. For the most part, Microsoft's games have been lacking. With their first party, their exclusives have been lacking. We're not seeing any games like Neo. We're not seeing any games like Horizon. Uh, yeah. the, the Halo series has kind of dropped off the map. It's not nearly as you know uh, sought Halo after as it used is to still be. Still very strong. It's a very yeah. good game, and it's got a very strong following. Okay, but Gears of War came still, out last still, year. 
That was very successful. Yeah. There is some Xbox exclusivity still. I well, it's, it's shared between the PC. There's still some Microsoft's exclusivity there. Exclusivity that is still very good. It's not. Yes, they don't have the number of titles and the frequency of these things as Sony does right now, but there are some out there. Yeah, I mean, there are games out there that are still going to sell well. If you ask me, the Halo series is not as sought after as it once was. It's not the pinnacle. It's not, you know, there are other games out there that compete with Halo and some of them outsell Halo. There was a time where that just didn't happen. Same with the Gears of War series. When Gears of War came out on the Xbox 360, it basically destroyed everything out there and it, it's not the same anymore. The issue with me and the Xbox Scorpio is all Microsoft is touting right now is power. They're not touting what they need to be touting. And that's, you know, we've got meaningful developers crafting incredible experiences for you mm -hmm. right now. And that's what we need to see. I talked to my brother about this yesterday. One of the greatest games I played on the Xbox One was Ori and the Blind Forest. It was meaningful. I love that world. I love the characters. I love the gameplay. But very seldom do you so have I that kind of... I hate this argument, Beastly, because I hate fucking console exclusives. Oh, okay. That's fine. But I hate this because, <laughs> yeah, you're right that Sony has better console exclusives than Microsoft does. But Wait. I fucking hate it because it's just exclusionary. You know, it's like it excludes gamers from playing awesome games. And I, I fucking hate it. You know, like it, it happens in games. It happens for games. It happens between consoles. It happens between PC and console. It, yeah. It's just awful. Like I, what I want is, you know, no matter what console you buy, the games you want are available for that console. More like third party stuff like Call of Duty or Destiny. You know, like that kind of stuff is it's so much preferable in my mind because it doesn't matter what hardware you bought. It doesn't matter which fucking huge corporation you put your money, you gave your money to to buy this this piece of hardware. You you still get to be a gamer. You still get the experiences you enjoy. But but and Sony, is... when they they put all this money into these developers to say just develop for Sony, it's exclusionary. Yeah, I mean, it's good for Sony because and it's good for Sony fanboys because it gets, you know, there's more exclusives available for the Sony platform, but it's not good for gamers. It's not good for PC gamers. It's not good for, you know, PC gaming. They don't want to buy a fucking $400 console that is clearly inferior to the $2,000, you know, box they already have. You know, it's bad for Xbox gamers. It's, it's, it's bad for the industry. It's bad for gamers. I, right. I, I have a counter argument to that. And to me, it's, it's, it's always been this way. I think it should be this way. And there's a reason why. You know, if you go out right now and you buy a Lamborghini and you get into that car, you're going to have a yeah. different experience driving that car than you would if you bought a Kia. Yeah, you but drive that's the hardware. You still buy the same fucking gas at Shell. Yeah, you still... yeah but you're, you're also going to have little perks and things that are made by that company that go along with that car. Right, Perfect that's example. what the hardware should be. That In my dream world... There's one platform and a bunch of Sony and Microsoft and Panasonic and, and whoever make the, you know, make consoles that are competitive on price and in power, but the software runs like it would on a PC. No matter what right. console you bought, you'd get any software you want and they'd be competing on, you know, the value of the hardware itself. Yeah, but, you know, it's a competitive marketplace, and, and that's what it is. You know, these companies don't build these, you know, multi-billion dollar industries just so they can sit across the table from the competition and say, hey, it's an even playing field. You're going to do things that make your your. I platform. understand that capitalism is a thing, yeah. and I understand that corporations don't have my best interests at heart. Absolutely. Right? What I'm saying is that I'm not going to fucking put my nuts on the line because, you know, Sony has better first-party lineups. Like, I... I that, that doesn't help me. You know, that's not a good thing for me. It's certainly not a good thing for a guy who bought an Xbox because all his friends play Xbox. It sucks for him. You know, it's it's a bad thing. It's a bad thing for gamers, This all this exclusivity. I You know, and to tout it as it's like a it's a great thing, I think it's, it's, it's devious. I love it. Just call me. The, it's my birthday, bro. Give me a fucking break. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll well, say exclusive right. games don't bother me nearly as much as exclusive content for a multi-platform game that's on everything. It's like with Destiny. That is frustrating. Yeah. I hate I that. I dealt with that with Call of Duty for years. Xbox yeah, had the exclusivity. I hate the shit out of that. A month, a month early, if you wanted the, the content a month earlier, you had to play on Xbox. doesn't that's matter if, the, if you like the PS3 controller better. It doesn't matter if the PS3 was more powerful hardware. The Xbox 360 yep. got the content faster, 
And that meant it sold more on Xbox 360, which means it was the lead platform on Xbox 360, which meant the PS3 version, which technically had better hardware, was a worse version of that game, which fucking sucked for everybody. Yeah. I mean, that's a great point. But, I mean, for me, it goes a little bit deeper than that. I just, I just see, I see certain developers who have been working with companies that have had their back and they've built bonds and they've worked together for many, many years and they're just working together to make better products for a particular brand. And I don't think that that necessarily hurts people the way that you feel like it does. I think that people know by now if there's something that you want in the world and you can only get it in one particular place, that you need to go there to get it. There's drinks that you can only get at Starbucks. You can't go to every other coffee shop and get because Starbucks make, Starbucks makes them. And you go to Starbucks to get them. And I think it's the same thing with video games. If there's certain games that you like, if you like God of War, you're not going to get it on the Xbox. It's something you know, so you're going to go buy a PlayStation to play it. That's all yeah. I'm saying. And to me, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, to me, it makes it's sense like... in a business perspective. It sucks when you're a gamer and you you are forced to... Yeah. Uh, make purchasing decisions like this it just yeah i mean it that does suck i mean and see the thing is i have a clouded judgment briar you know that and i'm happy that you're able to kind of see through that because you have all the consoles i have all the consoles that kind of decision making isn't something that i have to do so it's like i never have to say god damn it it's only coming to the xbox now I got to go buy an Xbox. I already own everything. Yeah. So a lot of those hard choices that a lot of gamers are forced to make, I don't feel necessarily because as soon as a console comes out, I usually buy it. And for those people, it does suck. But that's just the way it's been, and that's the way it's always going to be. Look, I want, I want PlayStation as a brand, and I want Xbox as a brand, and frankly, I want <laughs> Nintendo as a brand to be as successful as possible because that is good for the industry, right? Competition if one of these companies yeah. fucking ran away with it, like, let's, let's say Xbox just, Microsoft just said, fuck it. We're done with this shit. It's just been a fucking <laughs> one headache after another. We're, we're, like, we're getting out of this console business. It's fucking ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, it was just Sony and Nintendo. And, and Sony then Nintendo would kick their said, ass. Ah, you know, the Switch it didn't work out the way we wanted to. It sold really we're well, up. but. We're going to back out of this. You know, we're bankrupt. Oh. You know, maybe we're going to start making some cell phone games but we're going bankrupt and all of a sudden it was one fucking company that ran everything as gamers that would be awful it would be awful yeah, that would be it'd be orwellian they would you could you could absolutely guarantee they would stop giving any money to developers right because there would be no reason for them to do playstation exclusive. plus would exist wouldn't exist anymore you wouldn't any get any kind stuff. of good deal wouldn't exist games yeah. would cost more the consoles would cost more. The best thing we could possibly hope for is for all three of these companies and the PC and Steam and good old games and, you know, IO and all of these things to be as successful as possible so that they have competition so that no one motherfucker can just take all our money and run. This is why I love you, Briar. Thank you. Oh, man. That's so right. 100%. Absolutely. I absolutely agree with you there. As Brian. much as we don't like console exclusives, let's be real. That's what keeps these companies competitive with each other. Without exclusives, there'd be no reason to have multiple different brands. That's or just a, imagine it worked more it. like the PC where you, instead of competing because we have different software, we competed because we made the better hardware. How much better would that yeah. be as a console gamer? If Microsoft and Sony, instead of competing... Well, we have Sony saying, well, we have this awesome game and this awesome game, which you can't get over there. And Xbox is saying, well, we have this awesome game and this awesome game, which you right. can't get over there. Imagine they had to be on, we made awesome hardware and it's better than their hardware. Or no, our hardware is better than their hardware. Like, how much better would it be for us gamers if that were the case? Well, it's kind of, it's, I think both is happening. I think that they're both, you know, kind of streamlined with one another. They are doing that. But capitalism also exists. So they're still competing on a hardware level. You know, our system is better. We're making one that's going to be better at the end of the year. So that's exciting. But there's also little perks like exclusives. And that's for not me, a perk. that's not a perk. For for me, I see it as one. Yeah, and they try to dress it like a perk, but it's it's really not. Like think about it. It's not. They you know, just I mean, pay to have that, but it's not really a perk. They're just trying to convince you to buy their product. It's it's not really a perk. Well, I mean, if, if an exclusive didn't exist, it just wouldn't exist. It's a, it's another option to me. And and of course, not not every exclusive is a great game. But having that option, what if Neo didn't exist and people weren't able to play it? What, what if, if Neo was on uh, 
PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. I think it'd be great. I think I think it'd be great, but it's on the the console that made the most sense for the developer and the company that published it. You know, sometimes it's not made to benefit the competition. Sometimes it's made to benefit you. I mean, and that goes from small business to big business. Your company across the street from the competition. You're going to try to do things that bring people into your business, and that's just the 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 way of the world. That's the way people work. And just because it's on a multinational level doesn't change the fact that you're going to try to do things to to attract consumers to your side. If you're if you got a popsicle stand across the street from someone else's, you're going to try to get exclusive flavors. And for everybody to say those exclusive flavors shouldn't exist and everybody should have them. <laughs> I love this. It's comparison. insanity. I think that you should, you should totally be allowed to Popsicle do whatever exclusives. it takes. What the fuck is an exclusive thing. flavor? <laughs> Mango Dream. It's, yeah, it's like Mango Dream. And can it's you imagine you have two ice cream shops, though, and it's like one ice cream shop buys the exclusivity to like a certain flavor. Like you can only get this flavor Mango, Yo, whatever. Cold Stone, though. That shit and is they fucking own it. good. So the other person <laughs> can't. Yeah. Listen, Baskin listen. Robbins, 31 flavors, motherfuckers. Yeah, and no one else in the world can have those flavors. Like, it's just, just them. I don't know. That would I, be I, really I think crazy. this analogy is really a stretch because where is the hardware comparison compared to the software comparison? I think this we're really losing we're it. Yeah, we're getting out us. there no. now. This is just fun. I, I, I want think to take a second to this conversation. I think it's an interesting conversation to have. Uh, but I think we spent about 15 to 20 minutes on it, and I think we should just move on to the next two Absolutely, stories. we should. But before totally we do, I want, to, I want to recognize a great comment by Mikasta21. It said, every exclusive is great. Look at the Order 1886. <laughs> Moving on, let's talk about this great Destiny news. Robbie, no. I don't see it in our notes, so maybe you could link to it, or you can just go ahead and explain to everybody what's going on in Shoot, the fantastic I don't see it, but It's basically about the Age of Triumph update. I believe that's what it is, right? I think I forgot to include it. I'm sorry, Briar. Bro, he's not you didn't thinking put the it. Destiny Dude. news in? I might have forgot it. I'm sorry. I didn't see it. I couldn't find the <laughs> story. <laughs> okay, insane. I looked for it. I looked for it. Take it away, though. I'm All sorry. All right, Destiny. We got huge Destiny news this week. We got the Age of Triumph reveal stream from Bungie. Yep. Uh, and basically, what they're doing is they're bringing back everything old and putting it back to the current light level. And they're revamping the way old weeklies grades, work. So, huh? Vault of Glass raid is now going to be a current light level raid. Anything you get out of it is going to be current light level. So all the old weapons like Fatebringer, all the old armor, and even some new stuff. So the armor is going to now have ornaments so you can change the look of your armor. There's going to be sparrows for the new raids. There's going to be ghosts for the old raids. They're also taking a look at the raids themselves, tweaking them to make them a little bit more you know, playable or to get rid of some of the cheeses that they've had in the past. But basically, this is the end of Destiny, right? This is like this is what you've been asking for for a long time, too. The final see, kiss yeah. off to Destiny is the, you know, everything that you love about Destiny is now going to be current. There's, the raids are the best part about Destiny, right? They're the, there's PvP and there's the raids. And the raids are, you know, the best content in Destiny, the best PvE content in Destiny. And now all of it is going to be available, current light level. All those old guns are going to be back, all that old armor. And they're going to add some new stuff as well. So, you know, this is it. This is We're going into Destiny 2 at the end of the year. This is our farewell. This is our swan song for Destiny. And I think it's brilliant. I think it's, a, it's going to be a lot of fun, especially in April, May. when uh, They're also doing this Age of Triumph book where there's basically 13 pages of all of the shit you gotta do, <laughs> there's there a lot. Was, yeah, some like the first page is all shit that you can't even do anymore. If you weren't around in year one, you had to that, play Destiny when it came out. Yeah, you had to be there for Vanilla Destiny, The Dark Below, House of Wolves. If Love you that, weren't, though. You know that stuff's not available. There's gonna be exclusive rewards. You know, like it's just there's no new content, but all the old stuff, the best of the old stuff, is getting brought back into the game and re-released as you know like a farewell nostalgia song i think that's I, I think it's amazing that's something you talked about a long time ago on this podcast was that they needed to you know bring the old raids and make them current light level make them hard give people a reason to go back and play some of their most fun experiences and, and, and make them meaningful so this is it huh this is the final hurrah for destiny this is the final hurrah, hurrah in uh 
E3, I expect we'll start hearing about Destiny 2. Destiny 2. And the summer will be all about Destiny 2. Anything Bungie now, says will be related to Destiny 2. Now, uh, I don't know the exact date of uh, E3 this year, but just June preemptively, have, have you had your wife pick up those adult diapers for you? Because I'd like to see it live. Your reaction, and I'm sure They're on sure my Amazon gonna... wish list. They're, they're just, they just constantly get delivered, you know? Every time, every time we <laughs> do a Beastly Thought time. Show, I got to go change my diaper. <laughs> Beastly said, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll, I'll order you another pack. <laughs> yeah, it's only the adults man. for you. They're expensive. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> adult diapers? How much do they cost? Yeah, you got to be an adult to wear them. <laughs> Thanks. Good to know. <laughs> so that's really ex uh, a very exciting news for Destiny. Um, yeah. I don't know if I'll jump back into it, but I'm very excited about you know what's going to be happening with Destiny Two. I yeah, I can't I imagine this is gonna this is gonna draw too many old players re or like lapsed players back. But the players who are still playing, I think, will find a lot of enjoyment in this. You yeah, know, it's a nostalgia romp that actually matters. Yeah, getting that year one loot in year three, getting the Vex Mythoclass, getting the Fate Bringer, the Vision of Confluence. You know that that really iconic gear from year one. Having that stuff come back, that's appealing. Like if you if you don't recognize any of those names, yeah, no, you you're probably not too interested probably. in this. <laughs> you know, you're probably more looking at Destiny Two or or Mass Effect or you know whatever's coming down the road. But for year one players like the people who have been around for a long time, it's pretty cool. Now that was the last little bit of news, but I want to go over this last little quick story. We do it real fast. No Man's Sky is getting a brand new update this week, adding land-based vehicles to the game, a new permadeath mode, PS4 Pro support, as well as additional features to be expanded upon in future updates. I didn't buy His this favorite game. favorite game, No Man's Sky. Look how Briar's no looking. Controversy like, at all. It's reminded Briar he bought it. Look at him. I actually enjoyed that game. I know that it's not a popular I opinion, but I, I had reasonable expectations for that game, and I enjoyed my time with it. Um, and I'm excited to hear it's getting updated. Is this update out now, or is it coming? Uh, coming. It's coming this week. This yeah. week. It says it's going to be updated this week, but it's getting PS4 Pro support. Permadeath mode. I'm guessing not everything you do. That just, sounds interesting. Permadeath mode. Yeah. You, you go out and you, you expand the universe and you die, and it's over. Yeah, yep. it's over, right? There's that's no way to go find that backpack. Getting, uh, getting ground vehicles definitely sounds interesting, too. Like, as they build and expand upon this game, it gets really interesting. I know it's I know it's like the biggest disappointing game of 2016. But People are way you, too excited. We if you really knew were. this game was a independent game and you went into it with that expectation, you knew that it wasn't going to be like some fucking like mind. Like, it wasn't going to be well, The Witcher 3 or Destiny or, right. or Mass Effect. It was an well, independent game. And I, I actually it, enjoyed my time with it. I can't wait to see what they. You know, have it, in it store. sounds like it's actually becoming more of what they told us it, initially it would be, and that's the thing, right? I, everybody knew it was made by like a group of six people, very small development house, but they also sold it as something that it wasn't, Briar. They they really hyped this game up. They did late night shows talking about all the stuff that you could do, and it ended up not being true. So. Part of it was just being slightly disingenuous to your consumer, kind of luring them in with the old, yeah. oh, gotcha, okie doke. Yeah, uh, a little bit. Yeah. So also, the, the screenshots of that game in early development did not yeah, end up we, looking like it looked mm -hmm. when it came out. But, I mean, we've seen that before. We've well, at least, at least they're Dark supporting Souls, we've seen that with, yeah. you know, a ton Watch of dogs. Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs. Yeah, uh, every Ubisoft so game. I mean, we've seen that so many times. Ubisoft yep. every game. Uh, no, but no. Yeah. Sony's done it a ton too. With uh, what did Gorilla make before they used to work on Horizon? Killzone. Uh, Killzone. Killzone. Yeah, we've seen it with, with PlayStation Two. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen it with uh, what was that drive a game that was out in like uh, Burning Man Festival? Burning Man Festival. They what? still do those. The desert. It was like an off road driver. You could use motor rigs. Motor Storm. Motor Storm. Motor Storm looked that. amazing though. It still looked amazing. <laughs> Look at the early screenshots. I. I'm not a racing guy, but yeah, I mean, it's something that happens. I'm happy that they're still supporting it. I'm happy that they're trying to make some of these situations right. And who knows in the future if it really becomes what they told us it would be, you know, a long time ago. Maybe I'll pick it up. This was a great show. Thank everybody. Out, thank you to everybody out there for watching today. Uh, we've gone through lots of news. Episode 146. It's my birthday. It's almost over. It's my birthday. It's your birthday. Robbie, I think it's time. It's time. What? Happy, happy What's birthday. Happy, happy birthday. 
Hey! <laughs> I was gonna sing the Chili's Happy Birthday song, but that's all I remember. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't know Should you, we just sing regular Happy that? Birthday? Should we do it? Uh, oh, it's copyright material. You can't do it. You damn right. Is it actually? Yeah. Shut up, Bobby. Well, okay. Rip. Owned by the <laughs> right. owned by the state. Just rip. Owned by the Show's state. over. Owned by the man. You, you know, know what? I'm such a jerk for for getting the Destiny news. I might as well just quit the show. Goodbye, everybody. We love you, Robbie. We'll see you in our next life. Do they have maple syrup Thanks, in hell? Thanks, guys. Oh, okay. In hell? No. They, I, I said heaven, but at least you got hell on your mind.